Hey everyone, I've had quite a few requests to do a video for the Phyllis malware analysis post I uploaded a couple days ago. Uh, I'm going to put a link to the original post in my description. Um, just a little background on this incident. My colleague received an alert from our security stack for, for a suspicious registry key. Uh, he's the one that performed the initial triage along with reviewing the memory dump and observed some suspicious looking process execution. Um, I don't have the memory dump available, so we won't actually be able to analyze the memory today, but that's something we can look into doing later down the line. All right, so let's get back to the suspicious processes. What is actually suspicious about these processes? And it's not the actual process themselves that make them suspicious. It's the execution of these processes that make them suspicious. It's not common at all to see mshta.exe launching powershell.exe, which then launches reg svr32.exe. So already we know that we need to figure out what caused this chain of action to occur. Before we can actually begin our analysis, uh, we need to understand what each of these processes do so we know what, um, what we can look for. So starting from the top, mshta.exe, uh, the easiest way to describe it is it's essentially a browser that executes HTML application, um, which can be identified with the extension .hta, uh, PowerShell.exe that executes PowerShell, and Reg SVR32 that launches the registry. So let's do a quick recap of what we know up to this point. So one, we know that our security stack detected something malicious in the registry. And the memory analysis indicate that MSHTA was used to launch the PowerShell process, which then launched the RAG SVR32 process. Um, with this information, we can start taking a look at the initial um, alert for the registry key and see what else we can find. So if we take a look at the um, initial registry alert, uh, we can see here that the actual value in here, it's launching MSHTA.exe and it's passing it all of these strings here. Majority of it is obfuscated, so we'll try to pick out what we can and uh, go from there. So up to this point, we've been looking at a bunch of screenshots of artifacts that we found and haven't really done any hands-on stuff. So that's where that stops and the demo starts. Um, one of the other key takeaways here is the HKCU, which stands for H key current user. Now that hive, that registry hive, is only loaded when the user is logged in. So in order to do analysis on the HKCU, we need to pull the ntuser.dat file. So we've gone ahead and copied over the ntuser.dat file from the um, compromised machine over to our analysis VM. Um, now this ntuser.dat file is a registry hive, so we need a tool to be able to open that file so we can begin uh, reviewing um, the HKCU software VAF BLUV KYURS uh, subkey. So, in order to do that, we're going to be using a tool called Registry Explorer. This is a free tool that you can download. Um, the link for a download will be available on my blog page, and I'll provide that link below. So, if we open up Registry Explorer. We can load that into user.dat file by going to File, Load Offline Hive, and navigating to the location of the into user.dat file and just selecting the into user.dat and select Open. The hive will load, and now we can navigate to our subkey of interest. So, again, our subkey of interest is Software VAF BLUV KYURS. So, let's take a look at what that has in store for us. So I was under software, VAF, BLUV. Let me expand this a little bit. Um, and the key of interest is the KYURS because that's what's being read by the other registry value. So if we take a look at the actual value in here, it definitely looks like some more gibberish or obfuscated code, nothing that we can really um, understand or read. But we can see here there are some functions and some loops in here. So we know it's definitely some sort of code doing something. And what that something is, we're not sure yet. So let's copy this out and throw it into another text editor. 
so we can take another look at it. So once we copy out the value, uh, we can paste it into our text editor, but it's still a bunch of gibberish and we're not too sure what it is. Uh, what we do know is that this code is po probably JavaScript, just based on the initial registry key that we found that had indication that it was JavaScript. So before we can continue looking at this further, um, what I like to do is uh, beautify the script. Um, that way we can read it better uh, and it will format it so that it's JavaScript formatted. So in order to do that, we can use um, online tools, but I like to use uh, PDF Stream Dumper. So we'll execute that here, and we're going to do JavaScript UI. And you'll just copy all of that code and paste it into the JavaScript UI. And it has a beautiful format JavaScript function here. Click on that, and it'll format everything for JavaScript. Scroll down. It'll, it'll put in the tabs, it'll do the returns. Um, so it just looks a little bit better, a little easier to read, but because everything's still obfuscated, I'm still not sure what's going on here. So let's copy that back out. We're gonna override all of this. And because we know it's JavaScript, we're actually gonna go ahead and create an HTML file with this script. And we'll use a tool called Firebug to continue our analysis. So to create an HTML file, you need the appropriate HTML um, tags. And because this is a script, we'll also need the script tag. So the HTML and script goes at the top, and we have to close it at the bottom by doing forward slash, I'm sorry, forward slash script and forward slash HTML. Let's go ahead and save this as an HTML file. Alright, so once that saves, um, one of the uh, features of Sublime that I like is it'll color code it based on uh, programming language you're using. So this is its HTML uh, color markup. Um, as you can see, things are a bit e easier to read, and it looks like I missed another bracket there. So let's paste that in and save it. Alright, so once we save our file, we can navigate to the directory we saved it in. So I saved it in C Windows Temp, and I'm gonna go ahead and double click on coveteer.html. Now Firefox is my default browser, so this will automatically open up for me in Firefox, which is perfect. So double click on that file. We'll select Firebug from the toolbar, and Firebug will open up. And what it does is it shows you the results of the script or the page being executed, and it'll show you um, any values that are stored in each variable so most of it still does look like gibberish to us but if you scroll down a little bit here you can see catch and close now that's um, that's a string we recognize but catch is interesting catch indicates that something's trying to run and if it fails this catch will prevent the program from uh, crashing so if we expand this variable here we can take a look see what else we find and you see here there's powershell.exe IEX, uh, ENV, and then some string here. Now that's interesting, but we'll take a look at that in a little bit. So for now, let's just copy this value out. And we'll throw into Sublime. And we'll start from the bottom going up since we saw PowerShell. So here we have PowerShell.exe IEX, which stands for Invoke Expression. And it's saying, um, to read this environmental variable um, and the variable is WZSIQU. So now that we know what the variable is, the, the interesting thing that we should find should be in this variable. So if we do a search for this. We'll see here the environmental variable is being created and it looks like it's storing uh, the results of this um, decoded base64 string. So it sounds like the next step we need to do is see what this base64 string is. 
So we'll go ahead and copy this base64 string and we're going to use an offline tool uh, built into Burp Suite to decode this for us. So we'll copy that. We're going to open up Burp Suite. Now Burp Suite is a Java application intended for performing security testing. Um, so it, it does have a built-in tool to decode base64 strings, so we're going to do it offline. So I'll paste in the base64 text, and we're going to click this drop down here, decode as, and choose base64. So once that's selected, the base64 string is now converted into some ASCII um, strings that we can recognize. So we'll copy that out, and we'll create a new tab here, paste in the results and see what we can find. So taking a look at this code, uh, I'm not entirely sure what it's doing, but something I did um, immediately notice, it's all these hex values. Now these hex values could be used for um, some sort of instruction sets, or maybe um, it's injecting some sort of shell code into memory. I'm just not sure yet. So while I continue to figure out what this is actually doing, uh, something we can do right away is actually do some OSINT research. Um, and you know the way we do that is we can actually take a piece of this code, um, something that appears to be unique, uh, just copy it out, and we can try to do a search online to paste it there. And it looks like there's a couple of matches here, um, as you see that I've been to. Um, and one of the interesting ones I found was this. This was analysis um, done by someone else. And they got it from, uh, as an attachment, um, saying that it's payment for tax refund. Um, our sample came from, it did come as an email attachment, but it wasn't the same campaign. So I thought it was interesting. Um, you see here the analysis is essentially the same. Uh, they're seeing the same thing, MSHTA, launching PowerShell, um, and we get down here towards the bottom, and you see here that they're indicating that the script appears to be a wrapper, um, and it turns out to be shellcode, but it doesn't exactly go into how they determined this, so that's what I'm trying to figure out and learn myself, uh, and once I figure that out, I'll definitely update the post and uh, possibly put another video on it. Um, to share with everyone, but if anyone out there can provide some tips or guidance on this uh, Please feel free to reach out to me Thank you everyone for watching. I hope I was able to teach you something new if you have any questions or comments Please feel free to leave me a comment or contact me through my blog Please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel